week. Uh, obviously, Ryan Day didn't leave any uh, doubt that he would like to have seen the offensive play line play a little better last week and stuff. So what, what's the emphasis, I guess, third third week with these guys, third uh, game with these guys? You have good tape and good uh, meaningful reps now to look at. So being able to visually show the guys when you do your job, when you execute the communication, your technique, this is what happens. And here's what happens when you don't. So uh, the emphasis of, yes, effort, execution, the demeanor is pressed. Uh, but those fine details, like we just, we can never get away from them, but you can't have the guys being paralysis by analysis. And so now there's good tape to look at and say, all right, here's how we got to execute it. Here's the intensity, here's the demeanor. Maybe that something you get in a scout look or something changes on Saturday. Yeah. And you get that week one to week two, because what are you really game planning? You got 10, 12 games from the year before, and then maybe one or none here too. So we've got to do a good job as coaches, and I got to do a good job of giving them the right amount of information, the right amount of stuff to put in a briefcase to take the work, and then letting them go play fast. So that's what we've been really pushing on. How you felt they've done overall in the first two weeks, just your evaluation of the line? Uh, we do some things really well. I thought, you know, communication, protection, when we know where we're going and what we're doing on the same page, it's been good. Um, and then same deal, maybe you get in and into a long drive or maybe early on something doesn't go well, you're behind the sticks. You can't have that front runner mentality. You've got to go get half. You got to get back on schedule. Um, so the learning part of the game, we've seen now what hurts us and we've seen now what we do really well. So I think with that, just learning and going from those is what we got to take into this week. The short yardage issues that you've had, can you, I'm sure it's a combination of things, but what do you see when you watch? We all have to be efficient. I mean, just up front, you look at it, there's five guys. so. Everyone's at the POA because there's more people in the box, there's more people down. So we've got to help each other out that way. And then as you build on, do we add one tight end or two tight ends? Or then we have a good read at the back. So I think it's just the cohesive effort of the run unit on that page or on that play. We've got to be efficient and help each other and not be a one or your Tuesday because the more people you add to the box, the lesser room for error you have. And so that's where we've got to be more complimentary there as a whole. But really that just starts with us up front, moving our guy giving the back a chance to press, giving the quarterback a chance to read something a little better, and just executing better. How confident do you feel right now that the five guys you have out there, they're of a right five for this season? Well, it's still week by week. But yeah, those guys have been grooving and playing together. Um, you know, you got guys from the back, you got Vic, you got Tegra, you got, you know, uh, Enix coming along. So those guys are getting meaningful reps in practice. It's just a matter of, if you want to overtake the guy, then you got to be the guy. If you're the guy and you want to keep it, you got to press. So I would say from, uh, you know, Monday through Friday deal, we come out and, you know, you're going to err on a Wednesday practice in the third down look you haven't had. You're going to have some of those pressing all the way through the week. We've had that. We've just got to carry that into the game and bear a little more fruit and more consistently by relying on what we've done during the week because those guys are pressing and pushing each other. You know, when you get all the way to the end of the week, like you probably, probably saw my fat, out of shape butt on a bike with them. Like, there's, there's no lack of want to, demeanor, or grit that way. We've just got to execute better. So the, if there's a word this week, is it more consistency? Is it more aggression? Uh, what, what, what's We've the, been saying violent. Been violent. Yeah. I've been putting that in our, in our, uh, just in our demeanor and our stuff. And like, you want to really be a tough guy and be a tough guy all the time. And so we've got to play more violent. We can't be lines on a page. You know, it's, we're not making a ton of mental mistakes, which is a positive. We've got too many POAs and point of attack mistakes that we've got to go with and then you can solve that through aggression and violence by I mean being allowed on a page from the tackle and the playbook page says block the three technique that's not how you block the three technique you have the three technique and you got to go freaking block the three technique and so if there's any of an emphasis that it's been that of like let's be violent in executing our job because we're pretty good at communicating where we're supposed to go I was gonna say, you've got, you've got video probably of y'all doing it right too right I mean several series etc do you play those up more than anything? That's nah, the roller coaster ride. Yeah. You show the really good. You show the execution of whether it be protection, whether it be a run play. You know, I mean, you look last week, we were on the first play of the game, we roll up the ball, they bring a pressure, they add a six man to the box. We had it up and we go for nine. We're an arm tackle away for opening the game going whatever it was, 70, 75. The next play, we make the right call, we're lying on the page and we get a holding call. That was another run that negated a six, eight yard run. So that's what I'm saying. Like we get to the right people, but What's your demeanor and how you're getting it? That's, that's what we got to execute and clean up. So it's not, it's what's, you're using the word violent there. So in those short yard situations, is it the execution or just the lack of push because of the lack of violence that you're talking about? Well, as I say, I mean, we're on the right people. We got we to gotta block those people better. We got to be on them better. And then when we do it, we got to make the right cut. 
or if all five of those guys do it, then whoever's adding to the box to get it's got to do it. Or, you know, so that's what I said. We've got to be, we've got to help each other because I say, I mean, just numerically, if we have five blockers and they have five defenders, then it's man on man. That doesn't happen in the game of football. So how do you equate numbers? You're going to leave the widest. You're going to trade shift in motion or run away from the widest so that you're giving the back that one guy for a yard or two yards. You add more people to it, then you can block those seven, but there's an eighth guy there because you're not reading, you're not throwing off of the guy. And so the more you equate to it, you know, you have to be efficient that way. And then just, you know, everything that goes into it, the, the new clock, the number of plays, like there's a bunch of different factors going there. So what's that mean for us? re -bite back to what we go. If I have that three technique, I got to kick that three technique's butt. All right? So. Um, How much of that is just my overall mindset? Yeah, but probably a lot. You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can grade it, play a bunch of different ways. Like, I got an S, I did my job. I got an S, I got to my job, but was there an, a high effort or execution or a, a critical point that you got to? So emphasizing those and, like I said, being able to teach off of those. And the next time that shows, like that's a matchup game or that's you versus me and we're both the same, how am I making that block versus not making that block? It's got to be that violent, that execution, whatever that may be. Justin, are, are, you, are, you five, are you five best run blockers the same as your five best pass blockers? And how do you balance that when you start to figure out how you're going to institute a starting five offensive line? I mean, the, the holistic approach, like he's got to be a good lineman. So you have to be able to do both. Uh, I mean, I think you're more looking at that, Spencer, like you wouldn't have a guard playing on the perimeter being a tackle because he can't pass for out there, but he's inside and he can handle that. Um, and I, I, I just got over, I'm on the bike. I'm too blown out to really process that opportunity. I'm not trying to cut your question off, but like, yeah, you have to be able to do both. And then it's our job to put the guys in the right situation of, if you wouldn't say, you know, making it up, but if you wouldn't have true drop back tackles, then you can't call five man empty drop back protection. You've got to chip and release and do that. So I think execution wise, we've got to do a good job. And we try to do that of putting our guys in the best situation, you know, reverting back to be that line on that page and go do my job when I do that. So you wouldn't put a non-pass blocking guy in a situation like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Hope that answers your question that way. How do you evaluate the line's hand placement for these first couple weeks? Because some of those holding penalties, illegal hands to the face, those are things that- Yeah, I mean, when you get those egregious ones, like, yeah, I mean, you watch Josh Simmons from last or from last week. He's gluing his hips, he's running his feet, his hands goes high. You gotta feel that and get it out. He had one two or three plays later where Chip busted for nine or 10 yards, the exact same profile, the exact same hit, his hands started to go high and he pulled it out and put his hip on him. And then Chip pressed and slid. I think we got up to the two or three yard line. So, I mean, yeah, you get those. It's, why are those happening? Well, that's because my technique or something wasn't taking me home or I wasn't rebite or fixing that. And you just gotta, you gotta feel that. You gotta learn from them and you have to grow. And now we have to grow fast, fast, because there's no room for air. And we, you put a bunch of those together it's already hard enough to gain those yards with extra hats in the box or a, a blitz pattern or something coming at you. So we just got, we have to be cleaner that way. Justin, you're saying it, it, you feel like you're blocking the right guys. It's not mental mistakes, right? Am I to paraphrase for the most part what you're saying? We've cut down on mental mistakes. Okay. We got to execute at the point of attack. So when you're an offensive line coach and you just want your line to play better, what's easier to try to fix? If it is mental stuff, hey, we're not doing the right thing. I mean, or is it easier to fix physical stuff? You, got, you have to put them in the situations where there's less thinking. So, I mean, those good plays, I mean, you guys don't watch the tape once again. Like, you can tell when all five dudes know what's going on, it just looks like a wall. <laughs> Whether that's here, whether that's my son's playing, you know, high junior high middle school football. Like when they know what's going on, those five guys that don't know much are just rolling off the ball in a run play. If you're protecting the right guys, you're able to do that and play fast. The more you put on their plate or the more you put in their backpack, they're carrying more, they can't play as fast. So that's our job as coaches saying, how do we schematically put them in the right situations to go, give them those reps, and then how do you intensify those reps or quantify those reps in a scout team versus a good on good period, and we just have to keep pressing and coaching that, just and they have to keep taking it. Two more questions. When we talked to you like a month ago, you were talking about the benefits of, of the split practices playing on two fields, and how many reps I was giving you to evaluate guys. Did it also, are you playing a little bit of catch up though on like on the confusion um, aspect of it? When did you start to break that down to where the, the five ones would be together? When we got into game prep or game plan prep stuff. So that's been long enough. You know, those reps now for us are, are, uh, Full speed reps versus defense. That's how you're trying to simulate what we talked about earlier. So getting good on good or ones versus ones as much as you can do those, but not to an extreme, no, I don't feel that. Hey, Justin, with the, the, the want for violence, have you noticed a discrepancy in the physicality between gap and zone this year at all? Um, no, it's just comfort in the place. You know, um, I mean, I think we've been 
pretty universal, and we've had both of those on tape. But that's all game plan wise. Some teams match up, and you want to be able to do that. Other times it doesn't, and you feel like your zone stuff or full zone and things is better. So I think we've got a good mix of that. Um, you know, I think the guard, our guards are more comfortable just because they play a lot of ball. So if you have some pull schemes, they're pretty good. Our tackles have done some pull, and we feel like our tackles are pretty athletic. But if you get into a game week where that's not what's good on paper, then you might see less of those. But that has less to do with we feel comfortable like our guys can do the, that right. stuff more than anything else. Just these guys gave up 400 yards rushing to their first opponent this way this year, South Florida and stuff. What what problems do they present specifically, Western Western Kentucky? Well, schematically, I mean, they do a lot. You know, so you've got to be really good in communication. Of how many downs are there? Uh, where they're at? So they do a lot. So um, that's just getting in rhythm with our guys during a week of all right, what's called, what am I seeing, how do I go block it? And then, like we said, too, it's, it's repetitive, but like just put them in the right spots, in the right place where, you know, there might be eight different looks you have, but I'm doing the same thing on six of those eight. That's a good play. Versus if you're looking for that one E or two E that hits right only to this, you know, less, less attraction to plays like that. All right, we're